risk can turn into profit or that risk can turn into loss. But you don't have either a loss or a profit until you close that trade and move back on the sidelines. So even though the trade can be moving in your direction, you're just accounting your profit, until you close that trade out, you don't have anything in the bank. So if you have no trades going, you're just sideline. When you open a trade, you open up risk. And stop losses are how you control risk, how you protect profits. Now, a stop loss order protects profits or limits risk on investors' open positions by exiting at a predetermined price. A stop loss order is a trade placed with your broker to sell a security when it hits a defined price. Stop loss orders help to limit your potential loss when a trade goes against you. It also helps you lock in potential profit when a trade's moving in your favor. Don't sit there and think today, and especially on CFD platforms, when you open your ticket to set up a trade, you can put in your stop loss. You can decide whether you want a guaranteed stop loss, a floating stop loss, a trailing stop loss, and what you want or not. But don't think just because you did all this before you opened your trade, you should just ignore it all. A stop loss can be continually changed until your trade, your, you close your trade. A stop loss is one of the greatest ways to protect your profits. I always, first of all, anybody who trades without a stop loss is crazy because you never know what's going to happen in the blink of an eye. But there are many different types of stop loss strategies. Like the minute I see a trade moving in my favor, I move my stop loss closer and higher up and higher up because what I'm doing is locking in the profit while I let the trade move. So in other words, if I open something at $10, I put my stop loss at eight, and the the asset had moved up to $12, guess what? I'm moving my stop loss from $8 to $10. So even if the market moves against me, guess what? Now I'm guaranteed to break even, I can't even lose money. When that asset moves up to 13 or $14, I might sell or close half my position and move my stop loss up to $11. I keep moving it closer and sometimes I move it really short because if the asset's moving, why not keep a hold of it while you're locking in profit? Now, a stop loss is a market order. There is no guarantee the order will be executed at the stop price due to slippage. Now, if you want to lock in a very precise, and with CF3 trading, you very rarely have this. Okay, you very rarely have slippage. Because I think the worst case I can remind you outside of cryptocurrency is when the Swiss National Bank pulled the peg out of the Swissy and the Swiss euro went crazy. Well, what happened is even though you had stop losses and the market was falling so fast that your trade would be executed as soon as the computers could do it, but not at that guaranteed price. Because we have liquidity providers. They have to be able to buy up your sell. Now, in a CFD, this doesn't normally happen because a CFD is a contract between you and the broker. And they normally are closed at the, the precise price you had. But there is something called a guaranteed stop loss. Okay. And when you open your ticket, you can click on, and no matter who you're trading with, you can click on guaranteed stop loss. Some brokers charge a small, tiny, tiny, tiny little percentage if you actually execute a guaranteed stop loss. It means if you sell, said I'm buying the Euro at 102 and I think it's gonna go to 104, but if it falls below 99.99, I wanna be guaranteed to be able to get out of my trade. If it executes a stop loss for you, you actually pay a small percentage for that guaranteed stop loss. But in most cases, you get out the 99.99 anyway, but Maybe because of slippage, you get out at 99.97. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but if you're trading $100,000 worth of 
in your account, and so you're trading a million dollars with leverage of the euro, that could add up to a couple bucks. Now, a stop limit order, which executes as a limit instead of a market order, can help alleviate this problem with one significant risk. The order may never get executed if the price is not hit, causing substantial stop losses. Now, you can execute, okay. We today in CFD trading use the automatic stop loss buttons on a ticket. You could technically not set up a stop loss. What you would be doing is setting up a trade in the opposite direction to be executed. So if you were buying the euro and you set up a, a buy scenario, what you do is you set up a sell order also at a market order or a limit order, giving it a price to execute it at. If you use a market order, it's gonna execute it at the closest price. If you give it a limit order, it's gonna execute it at the price you set. Now, you could actually set up a limit order that's not executed. But most people trading CFDs don't get involved in these very defined Stop loss. They use their open order ticket, set it all up, and it's the best way to do it, the easiest way to do it. But if you're if you're using the MT4 platform, you're trying to replicate a professional trade, trader's environment, and you want to do these complicated stop losses, you can. And it's how you might set up, like I mentioned to you, not moving your stop losses, but I might close out half of my trade. I'd have to do this with an order in the opposite direction for the amount that I want that order. But trading without a stop loss is the ultimate recipe for disaster. Anyone who makes an argument for not using stop loss orders is most likely not a very professional trader. Some will argue that fear causes them to place their stops too tight. And this is one of the most important things is Setting, deciding properly where to set up your stop loss. What is an intelligent price? Not how much can I afford to lose. The first thing is where does my stop loss need to be in order that I don't get stopped out by the swings of the marketplace or small volatility? Once you've figured out where you would have to properly set your stop loss, then you have to go to the next step to figure out if you can afford that potential loss if you get stopped out at the proper way. Too many traders, because they can only afford a very, very small list, place their stops too tight based on what they can afford, not that they should be making the trade. First, decide where it should be. Forget you what you can afford. For, decide where the stop loss should be. And then, can I afford to make this trade with that stop loss there? You do not move your stop loss based on what you can afford. That's the upside down backwards way of trading. And it's very important because the markets have volatility. You can't control that volatility. And if you get stopped out every time the market swings a little bit more volatile than you thought it was going to be, or a retracement is a little steeper than you should it be. What happens, you never stay in the market long enough to make profit. So deciding where that stop loss should be, okay, because what you do is you calculate where your stop loss should be, where your potential target, you know, your profit scenario should be. Then you calculate your risk to reward ratio, and then you determine whether you can afford to make that trade. So when you're trading, the only time you have complete objectivity is also prior to entering the trade, because that's when you sit down and make these decisions. Okay. Once you've entered that trade, once you've moved off that sideline, you've jumped in the risk, you're no longer objective, because now you got money in the game, 
you got skin in the game and you're constantly trying to protect yourself so once you you're once you are in a trade you begin to lose your objectivity due to your emotions that's why it's imperative that you not only use a stop loss but determine your stop price prior to entering the trade you also figure out your exit strategy you figure out how you're going to use are you going to use a sliding or a trailing stop loss and constantly move it up are you going to close that in trade when it bounces all of this should be predetermined the stop losses provide many advantages in one draw, with one drawback. Automatic execution ensures a trader is limiting their losses at a predefined level, presenting, preventing loss aversion. Placing a stop loss order in advance with the broker enables a trader to step away from monitoring the markets. And this is the biggest drawback. You think you're safe and you stop monitoring your trade and you miss opportunities. A stop loss has one primary risk, volatility causing you to hit your stop loss price too frequently, eroding your capital due to fees and slippage. So we have to look for the optimal stop loss placement. So how do we use stop losses? Well, traders use stop losses on every trade using one or two strategies, the exit method for every trade or the worst case scenario. While stop loss orders help to minimize losses, they can also protect gains. Trailing stop loss orders can help provide profit protection. I am personally a firm believer in trailing stop losses. I think they're the most ingenious thing any of us have. This type of stop loss is meant to protect your capital. Initial, your initial stop loss, your hard stop loss. Even pro traders find that they don't always make winning trades. Don't let it scare you. Losses are expected when trading. If the overall dollar gained outnumber the dollars you've lost, you could still be profitable in the markets. Now, a trailing stop loss. This stop loss is more fluid than the initial stop loss and is designed to protect your profits. Once the trade begins to trend in the direction of your favor, you could follow the trend by moving your stop. You could also decide to collect if your trade hits your profit target. Once you learn how to protect your profits, as well as your initial capital, you could be well on your way to be trading like an expert. Now, we talked about initial stops, trailing, and we're gonna talk more about trailing stop loss, so don't worry about it. And now we're gonna talk about break-even stops. This stop is self-explanatory, break-even stops could help lock in a no loss trade. They are best suited once a trade has gone in your direction. And there is a little threat, there's a little threat of the initial stop being hit. Once you apply a little bit of leverage and move your stop to be break even stop loss, you could end up with a profitable trade. Our experts have discovered by first hand experience that this strategy could be ideal if you move your stops as soon as a reasonable as reasonably possible. This could help you minimize the potential drawdown on your account. So this is a hard stop loss. What you, what you would do is you'd go in the system and if, if you open a trade at $10, like I said, and move to 12, and you would set your stop loss at eight, you now click on the button, you change it, and you just put in the new stop loss level and it moves your stop loss to $10. You must physically do it. This is the break even stop loss. It doesn't move by itself. You have to be watching the markets and be involved with it. So sell, sell orders protect your position by triggering a market order to sell if you're long when the price falls below a defined ladder for level. So trailing stop orders follow the price and can help protect potential profits while providing downside protection. With a trailing stop order, you do not have to adjust for price changes regularly. So for instance, stock A is trading at $100. Okay, I'm gonna interrupt the class here because I've got three or four questions, the same thing. 
and I'm going to answer you directly, Lily, because she's the first one to ask me. How could I get the webinar recording? Okay, as I said in the beginning of the class, okay, if you wish to see a recorded version of the class, you can use the same link you used to come to this live class in about 24 hours and see a recorded version. We don't send out copies. We don't email you anything. There are huge files. You can watch it all you want by using the same link in 24 hours. Now, so let's go back. Stock, stock A is trading $100. We place a 5% trailing stop order with our broker. The stop price would be 95% of our higher $95. Okay. So stop, stop orders are, can be placed in dollars away from the price or percentages away from the price. So in this case, you could put a, you know, and our, our system allows you to go in and you open a trade at $100 and you place a trailing stop loss of say 5% and you can either type in 5% or $95. The next day, the stock trades to $120. Our stop would automatically adjust to $114. Now, if you had put it in at a hard $95 and it had moved to $120, that would have been a $5 stop loss. So our stop loss would have moved up to 115. If you're using a percentage, it uses a percentage of the climb. So in other words, when the stock moved up to 120 the next day, your stop would automatically be adjusted to 114, okay? Which is 5% of the 120. Now, you had bought it at 110, you've already got locked in profit. So if the market collapses and it starts falling back down, you don't care that it goes down to 195. You would have been stopped out at 114 with your profit of the $4 per share. Now the following day, the stock drops to 114 hitting our stop and our broker places a market order where our fill due to a slippage is, 13, is 113. We made $13 on this trade as we purchased stock at 100 and sold it automatically for a trailing stop at 113. A fixed trailing stop will automatically move your stop loss by a fixed amount. Like I said, you set it to $5 or you set it 95 to 100. You bought it at 100, set it 95 is $5. When it went up to 120, it would have moved your stop to 115. That's the difference. Okay. A fixed trailing will automatically move your stop loss by a fixed amount that you define as the trade moves in your favor. Your position must move a certain number of ticks, pips, or points defined by you before the stop will move. So for example, you go short Facebook at 117.30 with an initial stop at 20 cents, not 20%, but 20 cents, with a fixed step of 10 cents. Now, what does all that mean? Well, you go short at 117.30 with an initial stop at 20 cents with a fixed at 10 cents. So your, your stop loss won't move until the price of your share is moved by 10 cents. So when the price declines and hits 117.20 at 10 cent decline, your stop would automatically move down 10 cents to 117.40. As seen above, your stop would continue to move down by 10 cents for every 10 cents. Company A declines in the favor until your stop loss hitting hit closing on your position. You would have been stopped out at this at 117. In other words, you would have lost 20 cents. Like a fixed trailing stop, now the we have the dynamic stop loss. Like a fixed trailing stop loss, a dynamic trailing stop automatically moves your stop as your position goes in your favor. However, with a dynamic stop, your stop loss will move for every tick, pip, or point that the market moves in your favor. So for example, you again decide to buy short company AAA or 
we had said Facebook originally, at 117.30. Now we're trading it to go down with an initial stop at 117.50. We thought the price would go down. We protect ourselves if the stock goes up at 117.50. Your stop loss begins to move down by one cent for every cent that the company AAA moves in your favor until your stop is hit. This trade hit, the trade hit a low of 116.72, which moved our stop loss from the 117.50 down to our stop at 116.92, at which point the market bounced and took out our trade. And we got out of our trade with our stop loss at about 116.92. We had sold short. We went in at 117.30, got out at 116.92. So this is personally my favorite stop loss management strategy. Market volatility changes and using swing highs and swing lows, manage your stop allows you to appropriate react to the volatility. Swing highs are the peaks. Now this is how you kind of determine where you want to set up. Swing highs are the peaks reached on a security when the high of the price is greater than the surrounding price action. A swing low, a swing high is made when price breaks down to new lows, when a security is making lower highs and lower lows, then the security is in a downtrend. Picking swing highs and swing lows are important. Too many traders just look and see what's the lowest level something went or what's the highest level or what's the highest wick of a candle, lowest wick. You need a little bit more than that to get the right ones. Swing lows are the troughs reached on a security when the price is lower than the given number of low positions around it. A new swing low is made when price breaks out of the new highs. When a security is making higher highs and higher lows, the security is in an uptrend. So when you entered a short, you entered short once again for stock AAA at 117.30 with your initial stop above the swing, as you can see here on my chart. As new swing highs are created, you're manually, you manually continue to move your stop loss above the swing high. Let me get my highlighter on here for you guys. So we were trading short. Stock came all the way down here. We entered it here at 117. Stock is all the way down here, but we don't want to close our position. We want to be able to take advantage of the whole move. When it made its retracement, which is what it's supposed to do, its peaks and its valleys, it moved up here. Okay, we want to determine where we would have wanted to move our stop loss down. So we would have then adjusted our stop loss to here. As price continued to move down, once it hit this peak down here, we would have then used this level in the future as our new stop loss. So each time just think we want to lock in our profits, but we also want to maximize where our stop loss would be. And we do that by the peaks and the valleys that are made during a trend. Because remember, when price is trending, push, ease, push, ease, push, ease. Higher highs and higher lows, or lower lows and lower highs, depending whether an uptrend or a downtrend. Hold on, let me get this markings off of here. Sorry about that. So man, besides swing highs and swing lows, you can use moving averages. They're a great way to manually way to manually trail your stop losses. So once again, you go short company AAA at 17, 117.30. You manually trail your stop loss below the moving average, the blue line. Now you have to determine what stop lo what moving average you'd want to use but a moving average if you're trading in cfds and short term trading a 20 period time frame or a 10 period time frame moving average and what you want to do is use the moving average to continually trail your stop losses going down so steading stops is a very underrated and misunderstood concept in trading your stop loss placements impact your trading performance on so many levels. It decides how it decides over the risk reward ratio of your trades and thus determines the expectancy 
of your trading system. It also determines how adaptable your trading strategy is overall. In trading, there are three different stop losses that we have discussed. Okay, now, confluent stops are the most used stop loss type. A confluent stop, traders using moving average support and resistance levels, previous highs and lows, Fibonacci retracements, trends and trend channels. Okay, you would use these technical indicators together to determine where your stop loss would be. Now, traders usually use very obvious price levels with the confluent stops, which make them vulnerable to stop runs, especially technical traders. If you notice that the price repeatedly takes out your stops by just a few points, either add more confluence levels or add a little padding to your stop loss and set it outside the obvious danger zone. Then we have volatility stops. Volatility stops are often used by professional traders, whereas the average retail trader is often not even aware of this technique. Throughout the Market Wizards book series, you can see if you if you read the Market Wizards book, it was a great set of books, you can see that many traders follow a volatility-based stop loss approach. So what is a volatility stop? It is a stop loss method methodology which adapts to changing market conditions. When volatility is high, traders use a larger stop loss to account for greater market swings. When volatility is low, traders use a more conservative stop loss. Now, for us, when markets are trending and they're trending quickly, we need a farther stop loss. When markets are ranging and there's little volatility, in other words, Bollinger Bands is a great way to see it visually. When the Bollinger Bands are narrow, we know there's low volatility in the markets and we can set our stop loss closer. As we see the markets gaining volatility, because that means the swings in the market are gonna be stronger and bigger. And you don't wanna get stop loss out just because the markets have higher volatility. Stops and profits are interconnected. Thus, when setting a stop loss farther away, times a high volatility, traders should also widen his targets to counter the effect for the reduced reward risk reward ratio and capture larger price swings. Then there's time-based stops. Time-based stop loss approach can also be used in addition to confluence or volatility stops. It's more of a dynamic variable of stop loss placement rather than a standalone technique which helps traders put price and their trades in relationship to the markets. So, stop, you enter a trade. Remember I told you before, till you enter a trade, you're on the sidelines, there's no risk. Once you've entered that trade, there's only three things that can happen. Nothing, price kind of sits where it is. Price immediately moves in your favor, or price immediately moves against you. Those are the only three possibilities. Now, if nothing happens, if you're using a time-based stop, well, if, not, if you enter a trade and nothing happens, well, maybe you just want to get out of the market because it means your decision was probably not strong enough. Because in a market, you know, give it a few minutes, but what I'm saying is the market should be doing what you thought it would be doing. If it's not just sitting, get out. Price immediately moves in your favor. So manage your trades accordingly. Decide how you're going to set your stop loss, maybe move, change to a trailing stop loss, move your stars. Price immediately moves against you. Get out and don't wait for the full loss of the momentum is against you. So two of the three options, you're getting out of the market. There's only the third option. The center option is left to you. So how often do you enter a buy trade, but nothing happened for hours afterwards? If nothing happens, just get out of the markets. Because it means whatever scenario you use, whatever you use to depend, decide it's time to enter the markets wasn't right. A time-based stop loss helps you avoid being exposed to uncertain or other than expected trading scenarios. You, know, you got in the markets, you figured you'd have a trade, you know, you figured the euro's gonna go up to 104, 545. 
it's 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 not moving or it's moving very slowly up and down up and down it's not doing exactly what we thought but you say oh, i'm gonna let it sit i'm gonna every minute you stay in the markets is increasing your risk exposure okay if you figured this move would take the next couple hours to make and it doesn't make it okay use your time based step get out of the markets because if you haven't checked and haven't looked at the economics count, if you haven't looked at the news headlines, all it takes is Donald Trump to do something crazy in the U.S. or Putin to do something crazy over here to hit the headline. And before you know it, you lost whatever profit you had just because you stayed in the market too long. Every minute you're in the markets, the market is changing. There's other dynamics you can enter. So in conclusion, the ultimate stop loss strategy is Confluence stops, volatility stops, time-based stops. The good news is that all the previous discussed stop-loss types can be combined in an efficient way to take your stop placement to the next level. Whereas the confluence stop is your basis of how you determine where to set your stop in the first place. Well, don't forget some extra padding. Volatility and time-based stops are added on, which are a layer of robustness and professionalism to your stop loss game. So that's it for tonight, folks. We'll talk to you again real soon. And like I said, if you want to see a recorded version of the class in about 24 hours, just use the same link you used to come to this live class. Have a great night now.